All right, welcome back to the stream, everybody. We had a nice break and a nice talk about boiling water. <laughs> we are standing outside of this this cave entrance now. Uh, you have this pile of rubble um, that you've dug your companion successfully out of, this, this druid whose life you saved, uh, has, has profusely thank you. Uh, he, has the, he offers the remaining good berries in his pocket. He has a single cure wound spell. Um, available uh, and uh, is willing to use it for any of you. Um, I'm just like point at Janlar, like just yeah, Janlar, who's like on the ground, uh, still laying there. <laughs> Alrighty, there's um, a there's a badger standing next to you, just sniffing your chest. Like, <laughs> I'm like, like him up and cradle him. And just like, all right, <laughs> Janlar, uh, roll yourself a cure light wounds and uh, heal up some HP. One d eight plus what for the druid? Uh, d plus three. Uh, nice. nice. And, uh, you come back to consciousness with four HP, okay. um, and you are uh, for until you uh, successfully have a long rest. Uh, you will keep any death saves you made, which I don't think you made any, so that's good. Um, but you were unconscious, so uh, just bear in mind that is a mechanic that we are playing with. Uh, so you keep wake up. For... Do or only failures? Uh, only failures. For my knowledge, do I still have my spells prepared? Yes. Um, okay. Then I'm going to immediately cast uh, Mage Armor on myself. Okay. Uh, and use a strand of that to create or to increase my ward. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think so Mage Armor lasts for eight hours. I don't think you lose it when you go unconscious because it's not a concentration spell. Oh, I was just kind of assuming I lost it when I went unconscious. I, I thought I he was know. trying to create his abjuration ward, though. Right? I mean, he could. He's he could. Re like I, I thought. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought you were refreshing your mage armor in order to create this abjuration ward again. The arcade ward stays around all day, even if it goes away. But it gets two additional. It gets double the amount of any abjuration spell I cast. So that's kind of why I was casting. It was to gain more. Mm -hmm. HP for my ward to so take. But the Mike ward is, is correct. Still if you want the mage armor, it's still there. If you want to refresh your ward, you can refresh it, right, to get this ward. Um, I wouldn't then. If, if it's still there, if I look down and I still see my mage armor, okay. I wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, so who here is injured? I assume the druid is still injured. Yes. Uh, who else? I am. I assume Janlar still is. Yeah. I uh, took, Milman is. I, I only ate one of the good berries that I took. I was going to feed Janlar the other one when we dug him out of the pile. Now would be a good got... time for you to maybe take 10 minutes and rest up. You can just take a short rest here for 5 or 10 minutes. We can have actually, something well, I was going to use Prayer of Healing and just heal everyone yeah, for 2 Yeah, that, that could work too. Or two yeah. three. I, I would suggest we take a uh, break anyway so that I can recast. Yeah, we could finish the lunch we started before mm -hmm. we heard the screaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can do your identify. Oh, wait, no, you did the identify. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so I, I suggest we take a break, and I'm going to cast Prayer of Healing for everyone in the... Uh, Okay, yeah. So I instead of taking a short rest, you're gonna go ahead and just cast prayer of healing. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we could uh, also. Take no, a short rest I think we're gonna take a short rest. Okay, you do yeah. both. All right. So go ahead and cast prayer of healing, uh, and take a nice short rest. Uh, you guys can expend whatever hit dice you need in addition to uh, the yeah. prayer of healing. Everyone itself. gets fifteen. Everyone gets fifteen HP. Excellent. Um, it's up to six people, which I think is enough to get everyone who's injured. Oh, yeah, I get fifteen HP. Shit. Yeah, 15 HP. You can spend, you regain whatever uh, arcane recover you have on a short rest. Uh, you can expend any additional hit dice. You spend, you know, 10 minutes having a nice little, like, break. You eat some hard attack, mm -hmm. some food, mm -hmm. tend to your wounds, break out the, the medicine kits as need be. Uh, the druid uh, is, is uh, doing the same himself. Uh, thanks you very much. Oh, I appreciate your, your healing. I thought I was done for there. What, what was the problem? What are you doing? up here in, in this cave area. Oh, well, uh, I was taking the pilgrimage up to the top of the Amber Peak. Uh, you see, at the full moon, we're having a bit of a, a druidic gathering uh, to choose my circle. Um, unfortunately, uh, I was ambushed uh, earlier this afternoon. This, I thought to take my lunch here and have a have a nice break for the, the day, and, and I kept hearing this strange rumbling sound, uh, and he kind of points in the direction of the cave. And says, oh, well, uh, it turns out this, uh, this sound was these creatures. Uh, they came bursting out of it and, and attacked me. I tried to fend them off with my, uh, with my powers, but uh, it wasn't enough on my own. 
Thankfully, you guys were here to, to help me. That's all right, then. We're heading the same way. Our I friend Rose here is going for her. Ah, trial. excellent. I'm hoping to be a <coughs> circle of the moon here. Use I'm going to give him a reassuring pet with my paw. Oh, <laughs> you, you're still a badger. You just kind of pet him. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot you were a badger. <laughs> I don't know. Uh... I don't want to do. I'm still worried that we might have another earthquake or something, so I'm not going to leave right now. <laughs> all right, all right. This, uh, were you were you doing anything with this cave? It seems a uh, an interesting place. Uh, no, I I just stopped here on my pilgrimage, and it it wasn't a cave when I was here. It, it just. Uh, it, it was just a, 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 a crack in the, in the wall, kind of, and, and there was this sound, and I, I spent some time investigating it. I, I, uh, I tried to send some light through it uh, and, and, and peer through, but I didn't see anything until the rumbling got too close and erupted out those, those creatures. Hmm. Well, we're tasked with clearing the elementals on this mountain either way. Perhaps we should go investigate this cave, and you're welcome to join us if you want or continue your pilgrimage. Uh, Either says, way, I'm quite spent at the moment. Uh, I, I'll need to have some time before I can use Hollow's light to mold my body again. Um, uh, I think I will continue on my pilgrimage, though. If I can lend you whatever, lend you whatever aid now before you head in there, I, I would gratefully do so. Uh, whatever you can afford to spare. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what that is. He's he's kind of given whatever offer he can, right? Unless you yeah. want something specific, he's given you the good berries in his pocket and used the last right. spell slots on you. Yeah, um, I was going to say, he could give us the rest of the good berries that we haven't spent yet, because I don't think with the 15 HP from from Tom's spell, I don't know that anybody really needs to take any more. Yeah, uh, so I think I, I probably just return one of the berries that I didn't eat and uh, just say, no, you're, you're fine. Uh, just head out on your way. Okay, he... Uh, thanks you all once again in, in turn uh, gives a nice long pet to the badger and uh, <laughs> and uh, begins you know making his way back up the up the mountain um, with his uh, walking stick in hand uh, leaving you uh, in front of this this kind of new cave entrance uh, what do you think should we take a look there might be more of those elementals and it's our job either way Sure, we're only two down. That's not glory in us for one day. Agreed. And uh, I will go ahead and cast a light on that, that solid glass lantern that Tom mm -hmm. carries around and strap it, to, strap it to his belt. Nice, nice. Um, and so you do. And you cast light and make your way into the cave entrance. You see it as a natural cave. Um, with uh, uh, kind of jagged stones, the the you hear dripping of of water um, coming down from the this, this ceiling as you walk into it that expands upwards of twenty or so feet. Um, you uh, are immediately recognizing that as your dim light from the lantern goes past out about thirty feet, nope, um, it, can you can move. You can move. Um, as you do, you'll see the um, uh, kind of fog of war shift and move. I'm trying that out. It'll be interesting to see how it works for us. Um, you see that the as as the as the bright light kind of hits the the to dim, you can't quite make out uh, what you saw uh, beyond it. You're kind of the the darkness is almost uh, magically oppressive. Um, and as you step into this this area, all of you feel on your new seeker marks, except for of course Sambar Redhorn, um, the this faint burning um, sensation alerting you to the presence of rift magic. Um, it, faint and not very powerful, but uh, immediately you, you feel the, the burn um, hmm. the rock formations you see as you as you step in are this kind of um, uh, rough pumicey pockmarked stone that seems to have been eaten away through time um, in certain places uh, you see these scrape marks along the wall as if like stone has been dug out um, by like a great hand or like a rough tool um, but it, not a, uh, a human tool or a dwarven tool this doesn't remind you of mining almost more like scraping or grasping um, 
uh, and you hear just kind of a, a low drone of um, like stale wind as it moves through here. You, you, you feel the like old and ancient musky air escaping past you out into the openness behind you. So, two things. Uh, first, Villith has 60 feet of dark vision. I don't you know who else. Two. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say I'm not sure who else in the party has. You dark vision. all can only see 30 feet for the purposes of the way this map works. Okay. Right. <laughs> uh, Get wrecked. Uh, yeah. I, I was gonna say, and then the other thing is when I use the advanced fog of war feature that I really want to try out to see how you like it. Uh, yeah. It breaks really bad if all of you can see 60 feet. So I gave okay. you all the 30 feet of the light. Um, yeah. I, was just, I don't know if you can set it per character, 130, 160, etc. Uh, the other thing I was going to tell you is uh, because you have the uh, stream up, we can technically see the entire dungeon well, on Twitch. Don't look at the stream, man. What are you doing? We'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just, so you yeah. No stream sniping. <laughs> yeah, why are you stream sniping D&D, bro? <laughs> <laughs> You can pop the chat out, right? You don't yeah. have to. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might thought you might care to know that was all. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is what it is. Okay, okay, Greg. Since I have such keen, like such a keen sense of uh, smelling things, what does it smell like in here? Old, musty. It smells like stagnation, like like the air in here has been trapped for a long time. Um, give me a perception check. Blah, 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 a perception, perception check. Or perception check. Uh, <laughs> at advantage. Uh, with your keen <laughs> smelling nose. Four. A 19. 19. You breathe deeply and you smell um, this kind of acrid stench of like smell you you think of it as like burning stone almost like mm -hmm. a stone that's been that's been eaten or, or dissolved or acidic it bites in the back of your of your sinuses as you take a deep breath in it's faint but it's carried throughout here as if someone or something has been eating away at the the stone a little bit you breathe in a little deeper um and you get just this the smell of of um like gr of, of powdered stone as if like stone has been ground finely and it permeates the air um mm -hmm. you get this like coating of it in your nostrils and there's something else something just just at the edge of your of your smell you think kind of to the north of you uh that is otherworldly something you haven't ever smelled before and it immediately makes your badgery animalistic brain uncertain mm -hmm. and uneasy so what Rose is gonna do is she's gonna stand on her hind legs and she's gonna wave her paws for a second. <laughs> Looking around playing, and trying to gather some attention yeah. from somebody. <laughs> we're playing charades. We're playing charades. I get okay, excited. And then if, if somebody if somebody is is looking what she does what she does, she does she does like a tiny like a <sighs> and then she like picks up like tiny pebbles and then she goes and then puts it in <sighs> And then she points like in the direction of the darkness, I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, rabid rock eater. <laughs> oh, got it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, something eats rocks and... Uh, was it angry or was it binging and purging? I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> I slightly kick Tom in the shin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry. I'm, I'm, my, my camera got messed up. And now it's like not fixing itself. <laughs> it's like 20 seconds. It, this right, this just turned into Blair Witch with Dan. Uh, I'm casting Detect Magic as a ritual. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, you spend ten minutes uh, trancing, sitting in your in your um, 
uh, like kind of mind castle, casting your arcane ritual under your breath until your your eyes come wide with magic. Um, and in the room around you, you do not see any auras of magic other than the ones that you expect to see, like from Villa Stagger and your ward, uh, things like that. Can I uh, like look at the ground and stuff? Obviously, it's been like dug out. But can I see, like, if obviously the the golems came through that hole, they would have had to dig slash scrape their way through. Can I see what direction they scraped out from? Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're standing in, like, this new entrance where the rock has been, like, burst forward. Um, exactly. They, but from they, where they came from on the inside, they would way. have to... Oh, you want to, like, track there. them? Yeah, I want to track from which way they came from in the in the cave system because it's okay. literally scraped stone, yeah, so it would have a direction. To, you're trying to find a direction. So like, um, survival. The, I was the, the the stone that you're in here is old. The scrapes that you see along the walls as you move away from the entrance, right here at the entrance, is very clear and obvious. This is new. They like burst forth from it. Um, but as you move in, you know, a few feet, the, the scrapes are old. Uh, they, they're no longer the same fresh ones. It seems like they were in here, right? And, and from, you know, this entrance area over here, uh, the, the scrapes are new and they burst from out here in to the world at large. But in here, this is an old cave, musty and stagnant. Okay. So I guess it, they, the rocks don't make more rock marks. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything to... But I don't need a torch. So let's go for a quick, short little few steps in while he's doing detect magic. Okay. You begin oh, wandering this off. Oh, war is cool. Isn't it neat? I think it's super cool. Uh, this is part of the reason why I can't give you 60 feet of vision, though, because it, like, you see fucking everything. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, you can... <laughs> I, I messed around with Roll20 a few times. You can technically, like, paint out the, like, center columns and stuff to block That's a different... Sight. It's a different skill. It's not the it's advanced a, it's, it's not. Thing. It's not what we're using. Yeah, we're using something ah, much cooler. Yeah, yeah it's, that's it's, the line of sight tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. way more complicated. Right. I, mm -hmm. I broke a map once trying to do that. There was too many things going on. So as you hand. step forward here, like you're kind of in this this area, open area. You see where the rock has been eaten away. There's kind of large uh, columns of it uh, around you. Uh, and you, this this whole area opens up into this expansive central cave system. You can kind of see down uh, to the south of you. Uh, there's a, a smaller opening where the the cave kind of leads down south into a kind of a smaller area. Uh, you see that the cave expands to the north and to the east as well. Um, and you you see stalactites and stalagmites on the walls. The 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 air here is is stagnant and 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 full of dust and, and even a little bit of, of like maybe uh, moisture as well and you hear the the dripping of the of the caverns echo around you um, yeah as seekers are we like honor or duty bound to investigate all sources of rift magic like now that we've detected this do we have to see what's going on uh, I, I think that's a personal it. question Villith are you yeah. honor bound to do it of course you are. Is there not, there's not like an official like... You are seekers. You have chosen a quest, right? You are going to be paid to clear out elementals. So there's some amount of, you got a job to do that. But your mission statement as a seeker is to seek, right? Is to find okay. what it is that you want to do. You are given autonomy to make okay. the choices of as, as you see fit. I feel like uh, Brant will definitely be interested in hearing about this if he doesn't know about it, but we have no duty to do so just because we're seekers. Well, if the sound comes from the north, I think we should check south first to see what ran from whatever made them come out. See if there's any smaller trapped extra XP, if you're thinking my drift. I'll, I'll, put, then... I'll put a hand <laughs> oh, on Sambar's shoulder and I'll say... Um, Careful, Sambar. There's rift magic here. Oh. Because he wouldn't I, know. 
Yeah, no, I don't feel it. <laughs> it's, uh, you pick up the skill. It, it's an acquired, an acquired thing. Comes with experience. It's an acquired taste. <laughs> mm, you never know, Tom. You might suddenly start growing horns. Gain right. a fur coat, start looking this good. Are we gonna are we gonna move in guys? Are we gonna move in closer? Yeah, we'll yeah, move we'll in. to to scout anything? Yeah, if you wanna scout ahead. I'm gonna Absolutely. have a look down south. You wanna you wanna look down south? Yeah. Okay. This is a cave system, that's where we find gemstones, right? It is indeed. I kinda wanna be able to buy some new armor if you catch my drifts. <laughs> I didn't get any fancy money. <laughs> so, Villith's going to move over here and see what she can see both above us and... So as you move in this direction, um, you are hit kind of full force with that kind of acrid smell that uh, Faye, or that Rose was sniffing out as a badger. Uh, you... you you can just smell that dissolution of stone uh, coming from nearby, uh, coming from this direction up here. Um, and it, it's just, it's acidic and poignant, and it, it sticks to the back of your sinuses and your, and your throat as you smell it. Okay. Um, uh, from, from here, can I see anything? Yeah, the up here you see more rock systems very similar to what you see around you. Here, Vilith, uh, you technically do have more sight, so let's just. I can just drag my marker around a little bit to see what I can see, and and at least there, temporarily lift sight. fog of war. All right, that works. So I'm I'm guessing do the do the darker areas on the map do those block line of sight? Yeah. So as you as you go forward, right, the darkness behind you like fills in where the light fails, right, or okay. where your dark vision fails. And so like as you move forward, the darkness behind you, right. If we look at Villa's line of sight here, um, yeah, you you see the the brightened squares and everything in them, right. Right. But the as the as you go farther back to places that you have been the darkness kind of closes back in and well right yeah no i meant like there. um like like this stuff like can i see yeah there's stones there okay can i see this or is it blocked by the stones uh i mean you see it on the map so you probably can see it but it would be behind those stones okay i was gonna say or like can i not see Faye anymore because she's on the opposite side of yeah this like from... you, you like Faye is is behind like a big stone kind of like column or pillar or big okay. rock work in the cave proper okay. The right, the black so. the, the darkened stone <laughs> is like walls or pillars or right. rock work, right? That's kinda what I that's kinda what yeah. I thought. So Okay. So I'll kind of move up here and then So technically she can only see it looks like this opens up into a wider area over here and that continues. So um I'll I'll kind of move back down to the rest of the party so I'm not shouting across the cave and I'll, I'll quietly tell them it, it looks like the northern area opens up into a much larger area. Um, and I'll try and I'll do a little little scouty dude down here. I was going to say I'll, I'll go south while you're doing that. Oops. Yeah, you can do that too. You come with me. All Ooh. right. Uh, as you Ooh. move down here, uh, this oh, is why I tried to get rid of your sixty feet because you can right. see other. Right, Greg, words. you might want to set up a line of sight because we can. Uh, we can. I know see. you can see, right? But yeah. the it, when you had thirty feet, you couldn't, right? This is why I broke his vision. Ah. Um, but can you, you guys see mind. everything that I can see too? Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is it's why I set localized. it up this way so that you could all see, right? It's not localized to just my client. No, sir. Uh, so, as you look into this room, right, you, you see this kind of large uh, square uh, uh, room uh, that has been, like, carved out. Here you see, like, recent, more recent than the older ones. You're thinking maybe months or even years of, of squares uh, that uh, uh, have been just kind of torn out of the walls as if with, with uh, clouds. 
uh, or with claws, excuse me, not clouds. Uh, the, 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 almost as if they've been mined by, uh, something that can, that can, uh, just tear pieces out of the walls. Uh, there's a kind of like large crevice uh, in the floor of the room here. Seems almost natural. Uh, it goes about 15 feet in length uh, and uh, maybe about two and a half to three feet wide. Uh, and from it, you, you hear kind of like uh, rushing water almost underneath um, what this, this crevice is. Can I like lean over the edge and have a look through since I've got dark vision as well? Uh, yes, as you step up and you lean over the, the ledge, uh, you peer through and you see, um, indeed, uh, like a, a drop-off. Uh, and, and through the, the thing, there's this kind of rush of water. And as you lean over your head, uh, you see a pair of eyes appear in the water and look up at you. Uh, and please make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, or as, uh, the, the water seems to bind together and shoot itself up through the geyser. Um, Ooh, rushing nice. up around and through you. Whatcha? So just they make the saving throw? Uh, yes, because he's okay. Sambar is is standing oh, right. so over the, the, okay. the crevice. Uh, the twenty three, excellent. Uh, the the water shoots up, spraying in a in a fountain around you. Uh, as uh, you duck back out of the way, the ground here becomes wet and moist. And stepping uh, out of the. Uh, uh, stepping out of the the water is this like translucent almost spider uh, that is uh, made of the actual mist itself that erupted out of here on the wet ground and it looks at uh, Sambar and gives it a like, clacking <laughs> as its teeth kind of click and crunch together um, uh, and I think we are in initiative order here Hell yeah! Give me that XP. <laughs> oh. Uh I'll go Nat. The lowest I've rolled yet. Hey. Here we all roll. Uh, if you want to join combat, I suggest it. Yes. You guys got this. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it out back here. Let's chill up here right now. Mm-hmm. These little crevices. All right, and this spider will go at six as well. All right, so uh, you guys act first as this thing blashes its way out of the of the ground, dripping translucent, watery. Uh, the the spider stares down Sambar Redhorn, clicks at it. Villith, you are uh, nearby and are quick to react. Uh, what do you do? Uh, does it does it react to me as well, or does it seem like it hasn't seen me? It's staring at Sambar and clicking its watery, <laughs> elemental teeth together. Uh, how big is this thing? Is it large sized? Uh, yep. All right. Uh, I will pull out. I will. Uh, well, I'm holding my dagger right now. I don't really want to. I think a net takes two hands to use. So I'll just run up and stab it. Okay, cool. Uh, you race forward, uh, and you go to stab this creature. Uh, please roll to hit. All right. Uh, this is our 1d20 plus my main attack with the rapier. I'm not using just the dagger anymore. I'm assuming that these things are not being made of stone, might not be resistant to it. So... Oop, that's a fumble with the rapier. All right, your rapier slashes through into the, the spider itself, seeming to be a pure hit, uh, but the, the rapier just kind of splashes into the form of this, this and, like, as if it were water, seems to withdraw with no effect. Okay. And then uh, with my bonus action, I'll make an offhand attack with the magic dagger. All righty. Uh, for 21, you slash into it, uh, the dagger sparking momentarily as it strikes the spider. Please, uh, roll damage for me. 1d4 plus 2d6, because I don't have disadvantage for anything, right? Uh, no, sir. Okay, plus nothing, because I don't get a uh, bonus, because it's offhand. 
10, ten points of damage. Damn, you dagger oh, wait, doing work. Eleven. Eleven points of damage. Ten. Yep, I forgot right. about that. That I still get. Yes, uh, so it still glows with your blood, striking the uh, creature for 11 points of damage uh, as it is in uh, it d- clearly effective, right? Like, water splashes out of it. It recoils, like, clearly feeling it, um, and uh, it now turns its attention and hisses its little spidery, watery hiss at you. Greg, how long has it been um, that we've been in this cave? I mean, how long, like not that long, right? You just wandered around for a quick minute. Okay, all right. Um, cause I'm, I'm trying to track the because the dagger only stays enchanted for like an hour. Yeah, I know it took yeah, a yeah. Ten minute rest. So you took a ten like... minute short rest. You spent some like a couple rounds just digging people out. You conversed right. for a little bit. You've wandered. I'm around I'm guessing here. it's been like maybe fifteen, maybe yeah, twenty. It minutes. hasn't been. It hasn't been an hour. That's for sure. Right. Yes. Um, so uh, that happens. Excellent. Uh, Tom, you hear the the sounds of this spider echoing through the otherwise fairly silent cave, uh, and the the rushing of your of your companions down this uh, this uh, small bit of the cave. What do you do? Uh, yeah, well, time to go, and I'm gonna start running down to uh to lend some assistance, okay. which I believe is sixty feet with a dash, so I can get up to just about in range, actually. Yep. To there, perfect. So I run here, and that is my turn. All right. You run in. You see this, like, semi-translucent spider of, like, water getting slashed by the magic dagger uh, as your your turn mm-hmm. comes to an end. Uh, that brings us to Janlar. Uh, you hear the echoing of, of uh, the spider. You see Tom rush forward. What do you do? Sorry. Uh, I'm just going to move up to over here. Um, and there's got too many people in that room right now, so I'm going to wait and see what happens. What did you just say? Like, sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to stay here and not end my Okay. Career. All right. Awesome. Janlar, right. you, you stand there. Uh, Sambar, you have seen this thing rush out of the ground in front of you. Uh, what do you do? Um, I was just looking at my character sheet. Mm-hmm. With a minor illusion, can I make a like a visual copy of like a uh, Villith? Yeah. I want to make like because I can do it at will. Can I use that as my bonus action, or does it have to be an action action? It's an action to cast your minor illusion, I believe. Uh, screw it. I'm gonna shoot a bow at it, and if that doesn't work, then I'll start making illusions of Villith. So there's like <laughs> classic. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, you shoot your bow. Uh, ten. for a ten. Uh, much like the previous, uh, uh, attempt with the rapier, uh, your, your bow shot just f- flies through the, the creature uh, as if it were water and lands, uh, somewhere on the other side of the chamber. Uh, well, at least I don't lose the arrow, right? Like, I'll just take that. Chill I'll take a the- win. Chilling in the in the in the cave. Uh, so that leads us to Rose and uh, this thing. You all have definitely more decks as a badger. Uh, actually, actually, I I don't think I do because I figured badgers actually have a zero, not a plus one. So I would go after it because my initiative would be zero. Badgers have a zero. One. Okay, yeah. Nope. Yeah. This goes hmm. first. Uh, slow this, boys. This watery uh, spider um, opens its mouth at uh, Villith and Sambar and projects this this fluid at you, uh, and it it uh, fills the the box that you're standing in, the ten foot box, uh, with this watery, sticky substance. As it touches the the ground, uh, it turns into this this muddy, sticky mess, attempting to adhere to you. Uh, please make some deck saves to avoid the uh, ensnaring power of this this elemental spider. Uh, Villith, you uh, roll and duck and and manage to free yourself away from the, the grasping of the water. Uh, Milman, you feel the, the, uh, the icy tingle of this water freeze down. The muckiness suck into you and you are uh, is restrained, essentially. You have a movement speed zero um, as long as you are in this, uh, this uh, hold. 
uh, you'll get a strength save at the end, uh, or at the beginning of each of your turns to try to break free from it. Uh, for the record, Minor Illusion is a single action to cast. Okay. Uh, and with that, the spider begins to creep its way uh, closer to you. Uh, it seems to have no need for the... Oops. No need to fear the... Goddamn. No need to fear the... Uh, the Alright, this thing's just gonna die now. Uh, no need to fear the mess it's created. And it steps up to attempt to uh, get in range to eat you on the next turn. Uh, that brings us to Badger Rose. What are you doing? Uh, I think I'm just gonna charge into battle, I guess. All right. Battle as far Badger as charge. my little feet carry me. Um, I th so, hold, hold the phone. I think I do have less move on than a wolf. So, can I get there with 60 feet? You can move 12 squares. One sec. It's about, you could definitely get there in 60 feet of movement. Depends on how, I guess, how stressful you want to do it. Um, Is your burrowing speed the same as your normal move? You could just, like, yeah, straight up Kool-Aid man through that wall. The, yeah, I could, like, if I could burrow beneath this... Would it be possible to burrow beneath this uh, stone wall? Like, go from from behind Janla to here? You have burrowing as part of your movement, so you can break it up however exactly. you desire. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll do, I'll do here. I'll go, like, behind Janla, and then I'll burrow and pop up here. Nice. And I used my entire movement as an action, so... All right, solid. Uh, Vilith, you are not restrained by this sticky, ensnaring uh, element that has been cast at you. Uh, what do you do? Uh, I'm going to just take a little five-foot step to get out of the webs. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm going to attempt to stab it again. Excellent. Stabby stab. I'm going to swap my weapons, though, so that I've got the rapier in my offhand. Okay. Um, so. <laughs> I like I like the idea of you just, like, doing a little, like, flip with your stuff like a, yeah. like a chef does with their knives. <laughs> yeah, I flip, I flip the dagger <laughs> in the air, move the rapier over, and then catch it in my main hand. All right. Yeah. Uh, 1d20 plus 6 with the dagger to stab. That should hit. Uh, that does hit. Okay, and then I should have the damage roll for that right here. Oh, plus 4 with this one. 3 from dex, 1 from magic. So 17 points wow! of damage. Wow! 17 points of damage. Uh, and with that, the magic of the dagger flashes through to the center of the creature. Uh, and it, like, wiggles and, and shifts as you, as you follow through, and the water that was, like, held together, uh, just kind of falls down, uh, and splashes and just turns into regular water and begins draining its way back down into the crevice. Left behind where the creature once stood, uh, was a, is a small gemstone. Uh, it's a little amethyst uh, blue spellstone, or uh, not spellstone, but uh, gemstone, uh, with a small little kind of star cross uh, as an imperfection. It would be considered an imperfection in gemstone, but it looks exactly like a star um, in the center of it, uh, where the the beast once stood. Has it been ten minutes since uh, I cast my detect magic? Or yeah, it's been ten minutes for a while. Um, I guess I'll pick that up. Okay. And, uh, I'll, I'll offer it to Janlar and, uh, tell him since, uh, the Identify spell he cast earlier had some expense to it, maybe this is, uh, useful to him. Also, if he has Detect Magic up still, then... I, I don't, so, uh... No, 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 You have to tech magic up. It's been oh, 10 okay. minutes from your ritual. Okay, yeah, yeah. You you see you see that this stone no longer has any magic. It's just a stone. You could have seen a glow of magic around the the elemental that was here. Okay. Right. Um yeah, I take it from it and say it looks like a normal stone to me. There's no mag magic left in it. Oh, oh good. Well, you don't mind me taking it then. And I just like lean over. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll hand it to. I'll hand it to. Uh, I assume we plan to liquefy that. We're all a little bit in need of a 
some more assets, aren't we? A bit. Always. I'm not going to keep it for myself. Villith raises an eyebrow at his comment about liquefying, just to, like, unsure if he meant that as a joke or not. <laughs> Anywho, shall we carry on? I say as I walk over and pick up my one arrow. How big is the is the crevice? Can someone fit down there, or is it too narrow unless you're made of water and can squeeze? It's about three feet wide. Um, and it's no longer where, like, your sandbar is still technically standing at the edge of it, but I kept moving it around by mistake right. trying to move the spider. Uh, it's about three feet wide, two and a half to three feet wide, uh, as it varies, and it, it dr it's about 15 feet long. It drops down a, a good long way into this kind of, like, uh, like running water you see behind it. Uh, Tom, do you want to drop a light down there? Sure, and I'll I'll cast light on a rock and uh, just kind of drop it down the uh, the hole. Yeah, you watch it as as it drops probably forty feet uh, until you hear a splashing sound, uh, and then it illuminates uh, a little bit of water before being swept away. If I had to guess, I'd say we're above a body of water, and the water elemental just happened to be residing there, and we disturbed it. Could I tie my rope? to my water skin then lower it into the water yes can i do that and fill up my water skin <laughs> you can do this you begin tying a rope to the to the edge of your water skin which you pour on the ground uh and you uh begin lowering it down uh, about 40 feet you do have more than 40 feet of rope yes i have 50 feet of perfect that, that is exactly uh, enough to lower it down you lower the wine skin down until you feel it being drugged by the the pool of the running water um and <laughs> it fills up you begin hefting it back up uh and and it is it is heavy um, and, uh, you have a water skin filled with underground water. Yeah, I'm just gonna take a sip, I'm like, this is some good water. It is ice cold. It is as, <laughs> it is as if it has, was mountain stream runoff, like ice, ice, ice cold. Uh, it I, chills your teeth as you drink it. I, I ask him, I like cut my hands and ask him to pour a little bit. I want to see, like, make sure it's like crystal clear, not, not. Filthy, yeah. <laughs> filthy sediment. Well, too late now. I've already drank it. <laughs> uh, well, you too do, late for you. But after you, you die, you know. You do see that it is in fact uh, immaculately clear as it pours out. Uh, it, in fact, the, what little mud or whatever you have on your hands is obvious in it as it, as it uh, begins to filter into the water as it's cupped in your hands. It was so clear that it, you can still see the like dirt as it begins to to float around in the water. Huh. Do you want to fill your water skin while we're here? I mean, this uh, rope's meant for climbing, but you know, when I'm yeah, I guess we can all take a few minutes to fill up on this this crystal clear <laughs> underground stream. Yes. Sure. So we spend a few minutes restocking our provisions. Uh, all right. While that's happening, how many happening. minutes do you spend doing that? How many wine skins do you fill? Uh, five, because that's how many in the party. If nobody objects. I don't have my backpack though. You can't take it out of my backpack, so. Mm, for Phyllis that. water skin's probably basically full already. She's not gonna worry too much about it. Yeah. While everyone, yeah. Greg, while everyone's filling those, Villith is gonna move back to the entrance of this little tunnel and just watch out into the main room and see if okay. the noise of combat attracted anything to us. Uh, so far, it is still and silent as it was before. Uh, but you keep your eye out during the. Oh, I'll the make a new dex or a new stealth check while uh, I'm there hiding. Sure, yeah, please do while you're hiding from anything that might come to see you. Not great. Again. You I do. I do my down. slide thing again. You it do your slide thing again time. and hide in your own uh, cloud of dust. I like it. Okay. <laughs> uh, will you begin filling the uh, the? water skins, lowering them down one at a time, filling them up for a while, bringing them back up, uh, and eventually you fill them all back up with icy crystal clear water. Because that thing turned into a like a spider shape, mm -hmm. um, I will also, just so you know, be scanning the walls and ceiling for things, mm -hmm. not just the ground level, because spiders can walk on roofs. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to, when I see a looking around, I want to use minor illusion. Because get it for free. 
I'm just gonna make like a centipede scuttle across the ground in front of her. Just for flavor. What, in front of me? <laughs> in front of no, Miller, Miller. I believe. Uh, oh, in front of Miller, I was like... Is Minor Illusion the cantrip one? No. Okay. Satires get it for, like, at will. It's huh. his satyr, like, magic. Okay. Well, if it's moving and it's not just a static image, like the like the illusion cantrip, Billith will um, just kind of, like, move her foot so it can scuttle by without. <laughs> All right. So, five of you are in this, this cave, having defeated a... a elemental kind of water spider uh you have collected a gemstone and some crystal ice clear water uh what are you doing uh, i guess we have to continue this looks like a dead end so i i assume we're all fine to continue everyone's still yeah. full and hearty we're all on up my rope how Let's many go. minutes did water f skin filling take greg uh we'll call it about 20. 20. Because you got to tie up a rope and pulley, you got to get it down there, you got to pull it back up, got to redo it again and again. Okay. And yeah, it's, it's a bit of a process. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So, uh, do you want to go back to scouting, Villas? Sure, I'll go north. <clears throat> oh, the gray is the end of my line of sight. Okay. I was I thought it was like a change in floor texture or something. No. I'm getting confused by that. It's the end of your line of sight. So, as you turn the corner here, Villeth, you peer around, you see this great greenish brownish mold that's just covering the the rocks in part of it and it's oh, I just it was an acid it's pit. just acidic and eating you you can just smell it and you can see lines in the in the uh, rocks where it has just been eaten away it seems to be growing and devouring the the stone around this cave itself when you say it seems to be growing, like, is it, like, visibly, Not in like... front of your face, okay. but, like, it's okay. consuming it for nutrients is, is okay. what it kind of seems like. Um, well, we probably won't be wanting to run through that, and that's probably the source of the uh, smell. <clears throat> I will... Uh, pop back over here and whisper to Tom what I have seen quietly mm -hmm. and then move back <laughs> <laughs> I will uh, move back over here and whisper to Sandbar what, what <laughs> by uh, by Billeth quietly in and then Samba turns like doesn't even move his feet just turns his hips there's an acid pull up ahead <laughs> <laughs> Billeth just tucks a little closer into the stone <laughs> as this happens. Like, I'm just going to hide better. Uh, uh, so which way do we want to go? Do we want to go north or, or east? We can go southeast there, go through that passage and avoid it entirely. I mean, we can go north too and see what else is above us. I just have a feeling that thing's going to move. <laughs> hmm. Do you want to throw rocks at it? No, well, yeah. if it's mold, it probably has spores. Philip uh, will say that. Good fair point. point. Uh, yeah, we could go north and just skip past it entirely. If we it's, go how, straight. it's how fungi reproduce. So yeah, yeah Vilith will... Vilith, you've been standing within about 15 feet of this mold for a fair bit of time now. Um, please yeah. make me a constitution saving throw, please. Oh boy. You're getting the fungi. You, you get out. <laughs> That's a zero, Greg. All right. You begin kind of feeling this, like, itch in the back of your throat and a burning in your eyes. as This, like, smell and this being around this mold has, has kind of, like, seeped into you. Uh, and you feel as if, like... It, there's this burning sensation that's just like working its way into your body. Um, you are poisoned. Um, and you can just, you taste it. It, it, it. As it comes through you, you have disadvantage on any physical activity. Uh, anything that requires strength, dexterity, or constitution is, has been um, 
diminished by the effects of breathing in these spores over a period of time. Okay. Um, so if, as I, as I notice this, I'll kind of, kind of move back over towards Tom and I'll be like, <coughs> we need to cover your mouth. Damn it. We need to stay away from the, from the mold. It's, um, it's got an aura about it. I was going to say, is it sporing? Like you said it was Yeah, probably as she like kind of rubs her eyes, which are, which are watery. Mm hmm. Uh, I don't know if I can do anything for you right now. No. No, it's it's fine. Just we should we should avoid the mold for sure. Sure, maybe we should go south then. Oh, I'll, I'll take point. You just take it easy. What do you think? Did I have a disadvantage Good. on uh, stealth checks too, then, Greg? That require dexterity, strength, or constitution. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it might might just be in our uh, our best interest to go south then avoid the pool entirely. All right, I'll I'll take point. I'll try stealthing. Fifteen. Okay. Right. You begin creeping that's, that's... forward slowly and stealthily, uh, creeping along the the walls uh, as I'm you a... begin to move deeper into the cave. Uh, it's very similar, um, but as you move deeper in, the um, sounds of like scraping and and uh like rock stone on stone scraping together uh begin to emanate from kind of this direction up here i think i just pinged black on black so that doesn't help from like this direction <laughs> up here um, okay. and again from this direction down here so you just see me put my hand up and like i point at my ear mm -hmm. and like you obviously hear it and then what was the second ping? I didn't see the second ping at all. This, from from down this way. Okay. And then I'll take point and move this one. Do another sneaky breaky. All right, you begin ducking from rock to rock. As you come this way, the yeah. echoes of these, of these crunching, scraping sounds echo forward. There seem to be many sources of them um, and Tom finds his way in the middle of the, the stone wall there. <laughs> I was wondering if you, if you have blocked it off or not. <laughs> Tom was like, I'm going here now. <laughs> He's like, fuck this shit, I'm out. Like, uh, you you uh, just hear, I mean, it seems to be coming from like many, many sources, reverberating and echoing back out of this, of this passageway down. Okay. Uh, as you move here, uh, you get uh, some line of sight on some creatures. They are small, um, almost four to, to five feet uh, in, a, in a height. Uh, they are hunched over and made of, like, mud and muck. A combination of, like, the water and, and, and stone around them. Uh, they are, they goop and ooze in, like, forms with long, snouty faces. Um, and, uh, like, almost strange wing-like appendages. They're hunched over these, uh, these kind of boulders in the room. And they are, uh, like, seemingly eating. They're reaching into the stone and consuming it uh, as, they, as they scrape along it. You hear the, the, the crunching and scraping sounds coming from them uh, as they uh, sit here consuming the uh, stone. They don't seem to have noticed you as of yet as you crept along the uh, edges of these, these uh, walls here. Like, I put my hand up, and I'm like, there's three that I can see. And I point in that direction, and I, like, sh like hold my bow up. Like, should I shoot at them? Uh, uh, look back at the party. Like, are we gonna murder these things, too? Sorry, can you describe them again really fast for me, Greg? Like, appearance-wise? They're small, three to four feet tall. They're goopy and muddy. Like, they're this combination of, of water and, and earth. Uh, they, they kind of ooze and, and run in their form. They have, like, these kind of almost wing-like appendages that come out and, and hands and long, snout-like kind of faces. And they're sitting here eating the, the stones around them. Yeah, I think we probably should. Uh, go ahead and get ready for combat, Sandbar. <laughs> you just see me, I'm like, with a grin, arrow ready. Let's do this. Alright. 
I'll wait for you guys to move up. I'm going to move, say, another 10 feet forward against that wall. Okay, Just you so creep forward with your stealth of 15, and they don't seem to be um, engaged in... Uh, they don't seem to notice you. They're too engaged in their, in their consuming of the stone. Yeah, I'm just giving the party a bit of time to move up. And then I'll fire my arrows, but I'll wait. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'll so move right here. With disadvantage, Villith's stealth check is uh, eight. Okay. It's, it's dropped a bit. <laughs> I mean, well, I think it's fine as long as you're behind me, because I can't even, I'm not even stealthy. Yeah, you guys, I guess that's true. You yeah. guys are kind of at the mouth of the, Villith is up at the mouth here. I guess Tom and Jen are getting closer to needing stealth, but really the only one whose stealth has been tested at this point is Sam Bars, as he's kind of come into this mm -hmm. narrow gap leading into the, into the mouth of this room in the cave. I guess I'll step right in the middle of this walkway. And then I'm going to fire my bow at this one. <laughs> All right. You step forward, unleashing a, a bow shot as you do so. Please uh, roll the hit for me. Okay. Uh, coming out of stealth, do I get advantage? You do indeed get advantage. 22. Whoa! Uh, your bow shot strikes true right into the back of this, of this creature. Uh, please roll to hit for me. Six piercing. Or, I mean, not to hit. Yeah, roll damage. Thank you. Uh, and six damage you do. Uh, you strike it true for six points of damage. Your arrow just thudding into this, like, oozing thing. It re reaches back as you, as you hit it. Um, seven, eight, nine. Okay, uh, and it is very, very hurt uh, by your well, arrow. Well, seeing it land, I want to trigger my action surge, get that surge of adrenaline, and fire another arrow. So Absolutely. Quick, you one, you trigger that surge of adrenaline. Fire away. Oh, crit found no. uh, Your second arrow, uh, you, you were too, you were too uh, hyped up for it. Uh, and your yeah. arrow flies wide, uh, alerting the rest to your presence. Um, and with that, I believe we will go into initiative order. All right. <clears throat> All right, four for Janlar, 12 oh, yeah, for that's Tom. Great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sambar, feeling the adrenaline still. Uh, Rose with a seven and Villith with an a six plus one. Uh, yeah, six six plus seven is thirteen. Thirteen. 13. Beautiful. Uh, excellent. Uh, and they will roll there. Is there a two. script to roll with disadvantage? Is it be like you just do d two d twenty d h one? We'll drop your higher roll. We'll drop the okay, highest roll. L1. Okay. Yeah. It's, there's it defaults to drop the lowest if right. you hit D. But if I hit DH, um, it'll drop the yeah. higher. You can also okay. do DL if you want, but there's no reason to. You can also out. KL if you want. Okay. Yeah, K is for keep. Keep lowest. Okay. Uh, they go on 10. All right. Uh, so your your bow shot strikes true. The, the creature goops and... <laughs> and turns to look at you, uh, but you're too quick, uh, and it is still your turn, Sambar. What do you do? As it as it turns around and it, like makes that noise and stares at me, I'm like, just shoot it straight in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, your arrow flies true and strikes it in its mouth. It's like, ah, boom! And another six. <laughs> Roll damage for six more points of damage. Oh my goodness! All right, uh, it is knocked back onto the stone thing, but it kind of like slooshes forward through your arrows uh, and and stands back up, uh, clearly damaged but uh, still alive. Uh, and with that, we are going to Villith. Uh, you are the next to move. Okay. Um, let's see here. Here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I, I can te technically move in there. Um, Bill is just going to move up to Sambar right here, mm -hmm. uh, and then hold an action to stab one if it moves into melee range. Okay, right. You get your daggers ready and are, are waiting keen to, to do something. All right, yep. uh, Tom, you are next to move here. You see right. Sambar unleash his, his arrow upon the, the creature. Villa, step up to ready yourself. What do you do? 
Uh, I'm going to move up right here because I don't want them to be able to like surround us. There's a lot. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to completely block off this path so that they have to, they have okay. to run up, engage Excellent. us in the front. Um, and I don't know if I have any spells that are worth using at the moment. Okay. Um, you know, I guess as a bonus action, I can just throw up Shield of Faith to be real safe. Okay. All right. You cast your Shield of Faith. Um, yeah. uh, Bridges' light comes to guide you and, and protect you. Uh, excellent. Uh, and with can that... Can I ready a main action? Or, oh no, that's... Yeah, can I ready, like, uh, get ready to make an attack and that's like, I use my reaction then? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so I'll ready yeah. an action. I forgot that yeah, was a yeah. thing. That's fine. You, you're not really reacting to anything, but when they come up, you can well, react. Well, you can ready an thing. action to make a reaction to attack when something enters your threat zone is like a thing. Right, but you, I, okay, what I'm... What I'm what did you, how did you, you, how did you cast Shield of Faith? It's a bonus action. Okay, good, perfect. Yes, you yeah. do that exactly. Uh, you ready an in action to come up. So, first things first, this thing that has been shot by uh, Sambar uh, gets those, like, proto wings and it begins to kind of, like, glide its way forward across the ground towards you um, and comes up to make an attack. Uh, we're just going to have them all kind of rush forward here as they can as a group. Uh, you can get your attack off on the one that comes up next to you there, Tom. Uh, okay. There's going to be two there uh, because they can fit there and then that. And they are just going to stack up in a big bottleneck, uh, desperate to try to get at you, but you walled them off fairly successfully. Um, mm -hmm. And they just uh, line up like dummies. Oh, perfect! Yeah, they just—they're uh, just. Actually, they're just am I allowed to use a spell for the reaction? They just mass forward and yes. begin. You—you you readied an attack action. That was what you said. You okay, I wasn't. I, I didn't think you could ready a spell. Um, so. They begin. They begin amassing in like this big horde, just pushing, clawing at each other, trying desperately to get at you. Just running into their own squares and shoving <laughs> forward. There's in a mass of claws. Uh. <clears throat> Uh, Those of you who are ready to tax, please make them. Yeah, uh, I miss mine. You miss yours. So once, once my, once my turn comes up, uh, it's over. Ten also misses. Uh, okay. So uh, you guys both slash ineffectually at them yep. as uh, the first two are going to make their attacks at Tom. Um, yep. uh, Twenty AC is their target. Uh, okay, uh, they both miss, and the next two are going to make their attacks at Sambar. Uh, and they all miss. And everything else is just this clawing mess of mucky little tiny elementals crawling over. Like, as soon as one of them crawls up, the another one tears them back down. It's just a pulsating mm -hmm. mess trying to get at you. Um, and that brings us to Rose. What do right. You do? So I take it the space is all taken up, or can I attack technically from here? Or is this like a solid you wall won't be able that I can't to, take You won't form? be able to physically attack them with like a, a spear or a stone or a scratch, but you could um, maybe cast a spell at them or something or do something at range. Right. You um, could maybe burrow so underneath them and come up on the other side. That's what I had as an idea, but I don't have enough movement for that, unfortunately. Like, I could do it, but then I wouldn't have an action left, and then I'm, like, by myself against, you know, <laughs> like, 11. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, could, would it be possible for me to... I know technically it's just for actions, but to step up here, and in case somebody disengages, to take that place. Yes, you can ready an action to, like, swap places with somebody. Absolutely. Yeah, okay, so I'll go, I guess, right here. Yes, you do this. And you get ready to jump in the line to like keep use your badger form to protect the line. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I should probably also also yeah. roll some HP before. Uh, Janlar, yeah. Uh, you you see Rose step up to to help get in the line here. What do you do? Well, Janlar really wants to cast Shatter on all these people, but he remembers being trapped in rocks earlier today and fears to cause a cave in. <laughs> Okay. Uh, can I? F do I? You said these things are flying. Or do I have? They're more like gliding. They're not like flying so much. So they're not. They're not like above. The, I don't have an angle. They're, they use they their wings above. to like propel them forward as they okay. just kind of like glide over the ground. Um, I can't really do much. So I'm just gonna kind of do the same thing that Rose is doing, except for I'm just gonna cast uh, minor illusion behind us uh, at like this point. Okay. Create the image of like a large boulder 
like five by five it's like blocking mm, the just to like to close off the the view of the of the cave yeah, just in case entrance. anything else that hurts okay so yeah more. definitely yeah a big boulder appears as an illusion behind you um seemingly obscuring the view in or out of the cave excellent um, and with that, Sambar, you are surrounded by these clawing, muddy, gross things trying to get at you desperately. What do you do? All right, I'm going to quickly grab my spear and have a good, poking good time with the one that I already... All right, you're just going to poke away. Yep. Uh, Swap 22. You hit him, uh, and you kill him. He has no HP left, basically, uh, and it dies. And as soon as it does, right, uh, it is immediately drug out um, by the companions behind it uh, <laughs> and, like, discarded behind them as they rush to take its place. Uh, and its dead body ends up somewhere back here as the others just mercilessly rush forward to get at you. Um, excellent. Uh, Villith. You're standing next to them here. What are you doing? Uh, I will attempt to stab the one in front of me. Okay. I think. Uh, and and uh, I did realize Faye kind of mentioned the, the dual wielder feat, which I don't have. So I can't actually use my rapier as my offhand weapon. It has to be my scimitar in my offhand because it has to be a light weapon. So, um, okay. All right. So but it hasn't mattered because I haven't hit with it in the off hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, 2D, 20. Well, actually, no, I should be able to just roll whatever my last roll was because it was... Just up enter, yeah. Plus six, yeah. So stab with the daggers, 10, that misses no, again. No, you, you slash at him, but you just you can't get the, the dagger to stick in him. 20, D highest. Actually, you know what? Uh... Villith will use her cunning action to disengage and take a step back. Okay. Uh, and as you do so, Rose, you have the ch chance to jump in front here with a vacated spot. Do you take it? Yes, absolutely. All I'm taking right. the spot. Jump in there. <laughs> Villith disengages back. Rose the badger steps up. Ah! And, uh, <laughs> and uh, fills the, the front line here. Uh, yeah. Excellent. And that brings us to Tom. Uh, these, uh, I'm going to cast Burning are... Hands. Yes. Yes, you do. And I believe every single I one. I go back. <laughs> Abort mission. I think I hit all of them because it's a 15-foot range for Burning yes. Hands. Yes. It's a cone. Uh, <laughs> let's see how many of these we think you can hit. So I just love here... how the moment Faye steps up in the fight. Just like. <laughs> I think <laughs> you legitimately hit everything in front of you in a fan of intense searing flame. You put For your hands together. Points of <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, for six wow. points of damage, uh, they're going to all save. We get save. Yeah, deck saves. Yeah. Uh, my DC is, I believe, it's 12. Or no, it's 8 plus your proficiency plus your. So it's 12 is my uh okay DC. uh so we have one two three four five six saves uh and the other five all take full six points of damage uh mm -hmm. so the ones that i think have the least likely chance of succeeding are all in the front here the so ones yeah the ones yeah, those four are out. all taking full terrible damage um <laughs> And one, two, three, four. And then the rest of them will all take three points of damage in their attempts to get away from the the searing fire from your hands. I can um, do this again. <laughs> <laughs> Reasons uh, why you should never borrow and pop up on the opposite side of the <laughs> <laughs> Poor Rose. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so uh, with that having happened, these things continue their onslaught forward um we're gonna have one attack at rose one attack at sambar and two attacks at uh two attacks at uh tom, tom. so tom you get hit one time uh, uh oh yeah they have plus three right they have plus three exactly okay uh and then we have an attack at rose and an attack at uh sambar each for a 13 to hit Miss. That's miss, a miss. miss. Okay. Uh, excellent. So they are going to roll their 
pitiful damage. Uh, six points of damage for you, Tom, uh, right. as one of them manages to rend through your armor with one of its muddy claws and rip into your flesh. Um, and it, it's it's ouchy. <laughs> Rose, your badger form has stepped up and seen this immense fan of fire flash through them and do relatively little to them. Uh, what do you do? Well, um, I will bite the one in front of me, I guess. All right. Uh, badger to. bite, go. <laughs> Let's see. 14. All right. You sink your teeth into this muddy, oozy creature in front of you. It tastes foul. Um, cool. But you do damage. Right. Or three damage, I guess. All right. And three more damage I, to the thing in front of you. I do get... A claw attack as well, I think. Oh, nice! You bite, then you follow up with a claw. I'll try at least. Let's see. That 18 is a hits. hit. Yeah. yeah. And that's gonna be... That's slashing... 34 plus 1. Wait. An eight. Oh, excellent. An eight. Eight and four. Yeah, this this dies and falls in front of you, just splashing into like this dead corpse-like thing. Again, the creatures are ripping at it mindlessly and bury it towards the back, replacing it uh, as as the one in front of it dies, um, and it is dead and gone. Excellent. The yep, badger comes it. through. Jan Finally. Right. <laughs> you see Rose the Badger rip apart one of these creatures in front of you. You see the fan of flames erupt around them. What do you do? Um, I don't... I can't really do much here. Um, so I guess I'm just gonna come in behind them and hold my action to step in front if anyone has to fall back. Alright. Okay. That's what you do. Uh, action held. Uh, that brings us to Sambar. What are you gonna oh, do? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Spear attack! All right, poke him with your stick. An 18. 18. You poke good. For six yeah. piercing damage. All right, the one in front of you is very close to dead as you gore it with your spear, and it's it just kind of. But it keeps trying to kill you. Uh, excellent. That brings us to Villith. You've stepped back and allowed the badger to take your place. What do you do yeah. next? Uh, did did the badger kill one? Are there yes front line? Okay, are there front line ones that have been hurt that aren't dead yet? They they have all been injured by the fan of flames. Okay, I will throw a dagger at one of them that got hurt that is currently in the front. Okay, uh, you attempt to throw a dagger past Sambar, the most yep. injured of them. Uh. uh. 2d20 dh1 plus 5 nope, your throwing time. dagger falls uselessly in the in the pile around them you like just can't get the strength you need to really whip it in with your your weakened state um nope. and that brings us once again to tom burning hands <laughs> 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 all right, you unleash your fan of flames once again across all of them, uh, and they will attempt to save. Uh, there are now fewer of them, as there are nine? Yes. Uh, we have one, two, three saves, four saves, and five failures. Uh, so the ones in front uh, all take the full 12 damage, and all, like, the first three of them all immediately erupt in flames and fall dead. Uh, the one next to them that also failed its save dies as well, um, and these all take six. They are singed and hurt and burning, and they are in pain. Um, one, two, three, four deaths out of those nine. Uh, so what we're going to do, they of course, immediately replaced by this mindless clawing horde as they rush forward, even in, as their fellows fall. Um, one, two, three, four, there should be five. Five six, left. Seven, yeah. yeah, this guy can die. 
Boom. Uh, and there we go. They, there are five left standing, continuing to mindlessly try to just consume this flesh in front of them. Uh, and it is their turn to attempt to do so. Uh, the three of them that are within reach of Tom have identified him as the one to try to kill. Uh, and so they will all attempt to attack him uh, with a two 20 hits. and a 22 for two hits. Uh, so we're going to get... Uh. Uh, 12 points of damage on you uh, as they rend and claw into your to your flesh. Uh, and then we have one attack at uh, Rose the Badger who has felled one of their companions. The 19. Uh, yep, that's it. Yes, they strike your badger form for seven more points of damage. Right, uh, I gotta roll my con save. One second. Shot a dick and one more point of damage because they both have a plus one. Uh, plus two. Yes, you are correct. Thirteen points of damage for Tom. Okay, that's ten. Worse. Okay, that's one save. HP. <laughs> Sorry, my guy. I'm trying to kill you off here. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what? The only difference is that now I'm slightly closer to death. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, these guys can't. These guys couldn't drop you out right enough to all right so uh that brings us back around to rose uh you, right you have been struck by this this creature in your badger form did it knock you out of badger form you're muted sorry i'm muted i got one hp left so uh, we're good. one badger hp <laughs> nice <laughs> yes that's all enough right. that's all i need so You're I'm going still... to make some space for our, for our people here. I'm going <laughs> to burrow underneath this creature and just pop out on the other side. Okay, yeah, 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 you can do that. And this guy here is dead. He can go back here. Boom. You burrow underneath, pop out behind him, and try to strike him. Right. So I'm going to do a bite first. And that's a miss. Oh. And then I'm uh -huh. going to try to slash at it, I guess. Absolutely. 17 I hits. Said, my, my turn, I said I wanted to take the place of whoever moves. Can I take her place Yes, now? yes, you can. You have that opportunity <laughs> as she moves. Um, oh, nine, nine. Damage, holy crap. Wow. Uh, nice. You bring down another one. The honey badger don't care. Uh, <laughs> and you slay this creature that is now standing in front of Tom. Uh, it is dead, dead, dead. Uh, and there are only four of them remaining. Uh, Janlar, you have stepped up and you've seen the badger just bear this this elemental muck to the ground and kill it. Uh, what do you do? Can I draw a dagger and attack in one yes. turn? Or after? Yeah, okay. then I'm just going to draw my dagger and attack. All right. Yeah, drawing's a bonus action, I think. It's part of your movement, technically. Is it? Yes. Yeah, you can oh. interact with one object on your turn. Uh, 22 hits! Or Please roll two. some dagger damage. Oh, that's not a roll. Uh, for five points of damage. Nice. Uh, that is a dead thing. Uh, this right in front of uh, Sambar dies, but it's going to be replaced by the one waiting in line behind it as it claws forward. Three remain, mindlessly trying to kill. Uh, as Sambar, it is once again your turn. Okay, I'm going to attack the one in front of Tom. All right. Instead of the one in front of me. Sounds good. Uh, 14, 14 hits. 8 piercing. 8 piercing? Yeah, I got 8. There it is. You got 8 indeed. All right. Uh, 8 is definitely enough. It goes down. I'm Blah. going to push into its spot. Mm, nice. Yes, you do exactly that. Please push away. All right, cool. you have you have uh, killed them and put yourself between them. Uh, that brings us to Villith. Yes, Villith. What are you doing? All right. Well, Villith will move up and attempt to stab this one. All right. Uh, let's see. You have disadvantage, right? Yeah, I have you disadvantage because I'm poisoned still. So, stab attempt. All right. That Sixteen hit. hits. Yeah, you yep. you power through your weakness and stab right, into this muck. That one's probably dead. D4. Uh, probably. <laughs> he has the ability to do with, so much damage. With, with the sneak yeah. attack, yeah. Plus four. 
Yeah, it takes uh, four. 14, definitely, yes. Death, murder, death on the mud elementals here. It is... Okay. There is a single one left, and it is Tom's turn. Well, I have a... I can I can finish moving and then take my bonus action offhand at... Oh, okay. The other one. Bonus action offhand. I forgot. Yeah. Or, you uh, keep swashbuckling. 2D... 20 dh1 plus three five for the scimitar plus five 17 hits hit. yes Slash r 1d6 it takes one <laughs> one point of damage you slough off a little mud it flashes yeah. and smacks on like tom's armor yeah uh then end, then my turn ends. all right tom you've seen almost all of them die before you there's a single one left. You have it surrounded. What do you do? I'm just gonna disengage in case I miss. <laughs> I don't want to get downed in this fight. <laughs> but I just, I just can't take a few steps back. All right, you disengage. Maybe, maybe move into this. Like this, this looks like a nice little nook right here. I'll just, All I'll right. Just Tom thinks about the good berry he gave to the druid. Wishes he had it back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Get back a whole five percent yeah. my HP. Uh, that brings us to the creature's turn. It has a couple of choices to attack, and uh, it's going to attack Sambar because yeah. Sambar is the one that it sees first. Uh, with a 22 to hit you, uh, we'll do seven points of damage. Man, I've rolled a lot of max damage. Uh, uh, seven yeah. points of slashing damage into you uh, as, as you take it. But that brings us to Rose the Badger. Are you going to go yeah. try to finish this guy off? Can I reach that dude? Oh, yeah. Uh, you, you could go to Tom's old sandbar. space. Or Tom. Right, I could, I guess. Or next to Sandbar. Even here, I would? Yep. Yeah. Probably. Definitely. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Trying to bite it first. You or hit. hit. Or uh, one. <laughs> four, four points of damage. It is still then, I up. Guess. Go ahead and right. joke over your claw. I'll try to slash it. Uh, 12 hits. Miss, right? Nope. Oh, it does hit. Uh, AC 11. Okay. Right. Oh, I rolled 10 so many times. You did. All six. <laughs> uh, and that, so close, oh, Badger, so please, please describe in epic detail your <laughs> final Badger kill as this, this bit of combat ends. Well, I guess the, the... It is kind of brutal. I guess the badger just jumps on top of that creature and just dismembers it, like pulls apart, you know, one leg and then the other leg and just, you know. <laughs> just, just ripping burrows, apart burrows pieces of this it. muddy element. Exactly. All right. Uh, it dies and... Excellent. Uh, just boop. There we go. It's gone. No, it's not. Whatever. It's dead. Combat has ended. This room uh, is once again silent. And you see that in the center of each of the like puddles of muck and mud where these creatures once stood is a small, uh, about yay big gemstone. Uh, completely black onyx in the center of each of them. Uh, sounds like we have some distribution to do. I'm not... So math time. How many, how many of them are there? There's there were 11. 11. 11 Two over one. 5, so somebody gets a third. What we should do Each is of them just has a stone. pull them and then just Each sell them. Each of them, them has a stone. Yeah. yeah. Well, the gems might be... Eh, maybe. Do they have the star th symbols like the other one did? No, these ones are are pure black onyx. Uh, okay. No, no uh, impurities in them. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so I, I mean, we could just pull them as well. Or we could split them now, but I guess pooling is fine for... Well, no, because then if, if the person who's pooling all the wealth dies, that would be that would be terrible for us. I think splitting it here and now is probably the way to go. I'm like, you can just hold on to my, all of them. I don't care. Yeah, like, like, Janlar can't care anything look, else. It's, it's practical. What if I slip and fall into like a river of lava? Then you'll lose all 11 gemstones. I will, I will fish you out of the lava and get the gemstones. <laughs> <laughs> You're a good Just, you'll fish him out for the priorities right that's yep you'll at least right. fish out the gemstones and yeah. maybe tom <laughs> all right fine I'll, I'll carry the gemstones that's fine. i i'll take i'll take my gemstones all right here's your two uh, <laughs> like it's like i I'll just get you out. Like, it's not an issue. 
Villa, just 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 so I just so I officially state that it happens. Villith picks up the dagger she threw earlier and and <laughs> recovers that. Yeah, Perfect. I'm gonna go and pick up the arrows. I'm Greg, has it been hurt. an hour now since the other fight started? You're like, getting oh, there. Wait. Yeah, you're, it's right. closer now. You're probably ten or fifteen minutes away from. An right. hour. Just let Either. me know when whenever that happens. Okay. All right. Sounds Either way, good. I'm gonna suggest we uh, we take a break here and uh, rest up with a nice with a nice short rest at least. Because uh, I'm on one HP and have no more spells. Anybody else have a problem with taking a breather? Oh. As as I'm like wiping the mud off of my my sleeve, right? Like I didn't get it any on me. I'll just keep casting a minor illusion of a rock on the doorway to prevent. Okay. Them from uh, sounds good. Too. So you guys take a 10 minute breather here. Um, you pull out some rations, you pull out some first aid kit, you psych yourselves back up, treat whatever super, superficial wounds you can, have some recovery. Um, go ahead and spend any hit dice you need, and I think maybe this is a good place to take our break as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, let's take our last break for the day here, uh, since we got a little bit of a late stream, probably only three parts, uh, and we'll be back in about five minutes while y'all rest up. See you soon. Yeah.